Good morning girls, another Friday and I wanted to reflect on the week we've had in the context of the growing momentum behind the Black Lives Matters movement and a number of you have signed a petition about that and I, in my response to it I wanted to be very clear that I'm really proud of your generation, that you're using your voices in protest against outrage and to continue doing that and you know us as a school we will always engage with you in that so already we called an extra school council meeting and we will be inviting everybody who signed the petition to a meeting to talk about what was motivating you and what kinds of things you're hoping for as we move forwards one of the things that we're free to do in an independent sector is broadly to set our own curriculum. In reality, we're preparing you for public exams, so their freedom isn't complete, as you imagine. One of the things I would love to see coming out is you as girls lobbying government about the content of the public exams curriculum, because you'll remember a few years ago, the government changed those exams entirely, removing many of the brilliant texts by black and ethnic minority groups that were properly enshrined in those courses. So we are with you, we are in a big conversation with you. Also turn your attention to the people really with the power and make them wake up as well. And one of the things that we've seen is the attention that's been turned on statues and the very vexed position that some of those statues hold in our minds and the stories behind them. And of course we're in a Catholic school so we're used to statues everywhere. I don't think we even notice them sometimes. One statue that caused a lot of really excited and positive attention was the first statue of a woman in Westminster Square. And it was her birthday yesterday. So Millicent Fawcett, activist, feminist, suffragist, co-founder of a women's college in Cambridge, who saw that the vote was the way that women would change society and profoundly education and higher education. So I thought we might reflect this week, not just on the stories we want to learn about and the stories which need to be retold, but also on the very slow steps of progress we make, honouring women and black women in our society. And this is our prayer for Friday morning as we all come to terms with some of the things that we're seeing. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, another week at school is almost over. We look forward to the weekend and time to be with our families, time to rest, to listen to what you are saying to us in the events of our life, reflecting on the questions which will help us grow. When did I feel your presence this week? Did any mood or emotion take me by surprise? What do I feel grateful for this week? What am I sorry for this week? Who do I need to make up with? What line or phrase from assemblies or prayers stayed with me? Dear Lord, in this world of confusing signals, Help me to tune into you, to listen to the message of life. Help me to grow and mature into the person you want me to be. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Augustine, pray for us. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And thank you to everyone who's contributed so richly this week. We have an incredible retreat for Key Stage 3 and Miss Buck for her beautiful and inspired video on transition. Thank you girls.
tradition um, is something that excites me and intrigues me more than it scares me. Um, I think that change is inevitable, um, so it should be something that's looked upon more with excitement and not fear. Um, I think that often, no matter how nerve-wracking or uncertain things seem at the start, um, they do work out in the end and chances are if you're finding a change more difficult then others involved are as well. I think this is particularly true uh, with the start of GCSEs and A-levels as you have new subjects and workloads change um, but I think that everyone's in the same boat and at St Augustine's there's loads of help and support around um, to make the transition easier. So I think the key thing um, really for me is that change is something to look forward to um, as it can bring really great things and this is what I'm focusing on as I make um, my next transition into university. This idea is highlighted particularly in Deuteronomy as it says, the Lord himself goes before you, he'll be with you, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. current events around the world, I think it's fitting to remind ourselves of Malcolm X's inspirational quote. Education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. With this quote in mind, the high point of my final year of GCSEs at St Augustine's was using my passport and travelling to Iceland as part of my geography studies, which was a unique learning experience. We should now be re-emerging from the stresses of our GCSE exams, but as a result of the pandemic, our exams have been cancelled. This lockdown has given me the time to reflect and understand what is truly important in life, family and compassion. I am now looking forward to my, ne my next adventure at St Augustine's. What challenges will A-level studies have to offer? Like you, I am desperate to return to our wonderful school and see all of my friends and teachers once again. This year in lower four, I enjoy the close friendship that everyone in the year group and class has had. During the Birmingham hockey key trip, everyone was supportive and took care of those who injured themselves and managed to make them smile and lighten the mood. I'm looking forward to starting our GCSE course next year and studying new subjects. Although I know that the workload is going to be much more, I'm looking forward to stepping up for that challenge. To me, change and transition means that you will push yourself to adapt and rely on others for strength and motivation. most about senior school is that you have so much more freedom like in junior school then you'd have to be in the playground all the time when it was break times and lunch times whereas in like in senior school you can go wherever you want and you can be with your friends and it's just a lot more fun I think. When I first joined St Augustine's I was overwhelmed by the amount of clubs there were and wish I had a, and wished I had a time turner to do two clubs at once. However I really have I have really enjoyed the clubs that I picked and grateful that I had the choice and opportunity to do them. Some clubs that I really enjoyed are netball, Saturday sports, Python coding club and swimming, which I joined in the second half term, as I didn't feel comfortable enough to do it in the first half term. Some advice I would give the upper twos is try not to do everything in your first half term. It's fun to hang out with your friends at lunch and after school. And you can always join or leave clubs in a half term, I'm sure the person running it would understand. And don't be afraid to join clubs that you think are outside of your comfort zone, you could like it and be grateful that you have the opportunity to do all these clubs as remote learning with clubs. Um, I think the highlight for everyone in Form 3 is probably Higher Ashurst. It was so fun. So as well as getting to do really fun activities, um, I made so many new friends because you get to stay in like these kind of dormitories and then you have like individual rooms you can stay with people and we were just like going into each other's rooms and hanging out together and it's just a really great bonding experience and a way to get to know people who aren't just in your class and also to get to know more teachers um, and it was just really fun and I had a really great time and I think everyone else in Form 3 did as well.
Good morning everyone. I hope you've had a fantastic week. I hope many of you have had a chance to look at the inspirational TED talk by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie who talked to us about the dangers of a single story um, and this was particularly important in terms of the Black Lives Matter movement which has dominated the media this week. I know that many of you have also enjoyed colouring in the beautiful drawings uh, from an artist that we sent you again on the Black Lives Matter movement and we're going to be creating a beautiful display at school of all your drawings so if you haven't yet had a chance to do that please do. So let's begin with some awards. Congratulations to Ruja Piazakowska in lower four for achieving her gold house pointer badge and also to Sophie Robinson in form three for achieving her gold house point badge. Girls, we're so proud of you. It's really great. And talking about being proud, we would love to say a massive congratulations to the next set of Augustinian Award winners. Ava Asi and Anya Malik in Lower Sixth. They created an inspirational Black Lives Matter Educate Yourself video, which we sent you this Monday. And I really hope you've had a chance to watch it, not just once, but a couple of times, because their message was so sophisticated, wise and important. These girls are incredible role models. And younger girls, I hope you're watching them and thinking, that's what I want to be like. The video was so impressive that one of our governors got in touch with Mrs. Raffray to say how incredible he found it. So well done, Ava and Anya. Congratulations also to Shreya Patel in Form 3 for getting an Augustinian Award for an advanced piece of artwork. It was really beautiful, Shreya. Well done. Also, congratulations to Hamda Ahmed in Lower 5 for always being on time to every RE lesson. Well done. Congratulations to Zainab in Form 3 for working really hard and her fantastic contributions in form time, especially her presentation on the celebration of Eid. Congratulations also to the following girls, Olivia Aldakak, Maya Al-Khatib in lower four, Naomi Natu and Maria Vincic in upper four for incredible effort and their conscientious attitude in maths. Congratulations also to Ali Blanco Colazos and Olivia Henry for their outstanding progress in Lambda. Also, congratulations to Lexi Levitina for her amazing effort in Lambda. To Bronwyn Ellis for achieving an, an impressive distinction in her Grade 8 Gold Award Lambda. Brilliant, Bronwyn. Also to Isabella Shah and Ava Biliecki for their exceptional effort and achievement in Lambda. And finally, to the following girls in Upper Four for their beautiful contribution in the Upper Four Live Liturgy this week. Eva, Naomi, Lila, Kara, Kyra, Isabella Wong, Lucy and Carlotta. Girls, we're really proud that you, you represented your year group in this way. Well done everyone. I look forward to uh, awarding more Augustinian Awards next week.